Happy St. Patrick's Day, my lovelies. Welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. Yay, hooray, St. Patrick's Day. So this is my corned beef. It's over six and a half pounds. Um, it's, it's a commitment. And honestly, we're not eating this on St. Patrick's Day because I got this on sale at a terrific bargain for just over $13. And I'm saving it for family dinner night. And that's going to be towards the end of March because people went out of town, people are doing things, and we didn't want anybody to miss out. So we're delaying our St. Patrick's Day. But I couldn't let St. Patrick's Day pass without doing something to mark the occasion. So let's do St. Patrick's Day. Quick, easy, and affordable. Can I make my St. Patrick's Day celebration for less than I paid for this big corned beef. Maybe. I'm pretty confident. Let's see what happens. Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is my corned beef. I got it today over at the Albertsons. It was on sale for $7.77 um, per pound. I got slightly less than one pound. This will be our protein tonight. Um, and it, I had them slice it pretty darn thick. And yeah, I did not go over budget. I got all of the things that I needed, the milk, the cheese, the strawberries, the enormous uh, pork shoulder roast that I spent less than $10 on. And I got this. So out of my produce budget, I did take $7 and change. So that only leaves me with about $8 for the produce that I want to get over at Food City. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm fairly confident. Okay, so we have um, the dollar cabbage that I got on sale for 50% off over at Smart and Final. So that was a dollar. We've got some Swiss cheese. That was 97 cents. We're not going to use the whole package. We have some bacon fat that was rendered from bacon that I fried and enjoyed and that was the after effect and so I count that as relatively free because most people would probably just throw that away. I have the little tiniest bit of spinach from my $1.80 bargain over at the fries. I don't know, maybe that's 25, 30 cents worth. Um, it, we had a lot of salad and we enjoyed it very much. Andrew said, what are you gonna do with that little bit? Dehydrate it? I said, I guess, I don't know. Um, but we're actually going to use it today to move it along because we've enjoyed it and um, it's still crispy and delicious. It's not wet, it doesn't smell funky. So it's going today. Thank you very much, you have been very useful. I've got an onion and I have about two cups of leftover mashed potatoes um if you didn't have leftover mashed potatoes you could make some mashed potatoes you could make one of those little instant packages of mashed potatoes i think those are good i think they're tasty and just fine so i'm not mad at them at all i have two little sprigs of green onion from my garden if you didn't have these you could certainly omit them salt pepper um garlic that's what we're going to need is some granulated garlic or fresh if you've got it or fresh if you've got the energy to chop it I'm a little lazy today a little lazy granulated garlic found it okay so we're going to set the mashed potatoes to the side and let's go ahead and get started on a little bit of our chopping and we're not going to use this whole cabbage because it's just Andrew and I. So I'm just going to take a little piece off over here on the side. Just about, just about that much. Maybe a third. Maybe a third. Yeah, this is not a very big cabbage. None of them were. That's okay. We got one. That's the important part. And I am just going to go ahead and give this a very informal slice not too thick not too thin because of course cabbage will significantly reduce in size as it cooks there we go 
Maybe we'll go ahead and cut it in half. Yay, St. Patrick's Day. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pot on to a five. I'm gonna grab some bacon fat. And I'm gonna grab about that much. Not quite a tablespoon. Maybe three fourths of a tablespoon. And I think that's gonna be plenty. We can always add more. But my potatoes um, were made with half and half and butter and everything else. So we don't need a whole lot of, we don't have to do a whole lot of work to get that really good unctuous feel because those potatoes are pretty darn delicious. And I just made those extra the other night because I knew we would be doing this recipe. But if, like I said, if you don't have um, mashed potatoes in the refrigerator all ready to go, one of those pre-packaged ones will be just fine. And I checked the price over at Albertsons on them. I'll show you the price right here. They have a pretty good selection at my Albertsons, um, right at the $2 mark. So we're at about $7 for the meat. $2 will say for potatoes. The cabbage was a dollar. Now, if you miss the cabbage deal, or you don't really want a whole cabbage, you can buy one of those coleslaw mixes over in the produce section. Uh, I took a photo of one. I'll go ahead and put it here. For you. And they had a coleslaw mix for $2. Um, so if you paid seven for the corned beef slices, and two dollars for a coleslaw mix that's nine and then two dollars for instant mashed potatoes that's how much they were at my albertson's but i know for a fact you could get them for a dollar at uh, uh, walmart a big a fairly big box for a dollar over at the walmart maybe it was a dollar nine last time i looked i can't remember okay and so i'm just gonna give this onion it's not even a half again probably like a third because i'm also using the green onion if i wasn't using the green onion maybe i'd go even as much as a half um yeah so seven for the corned beef two for the coleslaw mix that's nine and then for the potatoes the instant potatoes or what have you we'll just give it two dollars now we're at 11. Um, the spinach is totally optional. The cheese is completely optional. The green onion, again, not a huge concern. If you didn't have bacon fat, well, you know what? Go ahead and use some canola oil or olive oil or vegetable oil or whatever oil you've got that's just fine um if you had any of those little bacon crumbles you could add those to give it that essence of bacon i'm not adding the bacon because we have the corned beef um but that's entirely up to you i'm going to go ahead and add my vegetables in here my onion and my cabbage Yay, hooray. Grab some tongs. Okay. And a lid. There we go. And I'm just gonna let this cabbage and onion mixture fry up. And might as well put our spinach in there too. So that spinach lasted a long, long time. And I kind of love the size of this clamshell. I'm not sure what I would do with it, but sometimes you forget that way. You ever see a piece of plastic 
or a jar or a container or something like that. That is a great size or that's got a great lid and then you want to save it. Um, if I save this one, I will throw two others that I have saved out because I do not want to become a plastics hoarder, but um, I'm considering it. I don't know what for, but it's it's not too big. It's not too small. Put that in the sink for later for consideration. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and chop up my green onion here. Again, very informally. I'm not worried about it. Gordon Ramsay, you're more than welcome to come on down, baby. I'll feed you. I'll feed you some deli meat, corned beef, leftover mashed potatoes, a cabbage and onion. <laughs> It'll be all right. Actually, this recipe to me looks very, um, it looks very nice. It looks very nice. It looks really tasty. Um, I made something similar at Thanksgiving. I didn't do YouTube then, so I didn't, I didn't film it. But, uh, you know, Thanksgiving will come again. Thanksgiving is hard for Andrew and I because most of my family um, does something else for the holiday. And they go places, they take trips, they vacation, uh, what have you. So we don't have like a huge celebration. For the majority of our marriage, I have always worked on Thanksgiving because for the majority of my life, I have either worked in retail or restaurant and hospitality jobs, most of which are always open on Thanksgiving. And I would always volunteer knowing that we did not have like a huge celebration to go to. So for pretty much the last 27 years, our Thanksgiving tradition was that I would go to work and then on my way home, I would stop at Jack in the Box and buy a feast of junk food and then we would turn something fun on TV and we would just pig out on junk food and watch trash TV on Thanksgiving. Um, so yeah, this year we did something else because as we've gotten older, we can't eat that much junk food. And so that's kind of sad, but also kind of good. So um, I made a very similar thing to what I'm making tonight, except with turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce and gravy. And we did have mashed potatoes on the side, but it didn't even take 30 minutes to put the whole meal together and we were eating. And the dishes were minimal and I was not exhausted and there was no tear there were no tears there were no tears that's a good Thanksgiving that's a good any holiday if there are no tears all right I'm gonna let this cabbage cook bring you back in a minute happy St. Patrick's Day I just thought this looked so pretty in here I just wanted to show you the cabbage and the onion and the spinach all in here doing its thing I think that just looks lovely and it has significantly reduced um, it's starting to get a little bit of char on it a little bit of brown and I am a-okay with that so I'm gonna put the lid back on let it keep on keeping on be delicious for me oh. did you know that wrapping your cabbage in aluminum foil will make it last longer in your refrigerator this is true I have tried it and tested this theory a couple of different times and storing it cut side down and then wrapping it up. And it doesn't have to be super snug, but you know, as good as you can get it. will make this last at least one to two weeks longer than it usually would. True story. Okay, I have sliced up three pieces of cheese and I am going to go ahead and add those to my mashed potatoes. And I am also going to add chopped green onion. And I'm going to, oh, I missed one. I'm going to add one teaspoon 
of granulated garlic. You could add more, you can add less, you can omit it entirely if you're not a fan. And there we go. and stir this up a little bit. Incorporate all of that good garlic. Oh, did I lose? Oh, I thought I lost some. Didn't lose any. False alarm. Stir this up, getting that garlic, getting the cheese incorporated, all of these things. And my mashed potatoes, seem a little bit stiff. They are just about at room temperature. I may need to add a little bit more of half and half to them, but I'm going to put in my cabbage, onion, spinach mixture, and that's just coming off the stove now. Everything's really soft, just the way I want it. Should have got a bigger bowl. You need a bigger boat. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is something that I often do is um, I don't want to make another thing. I could have just put the mashed potatoes into here. That probably would have been smarter. Didn't think about it. Not going back on it now. And now I'm just going to mix my cabbage and spinach and onions, potatoes, cheese and green onion together. Um, kind of like a cold cannon, um, except not, and probably not authentic at all, but, um, I'm not really Irish, so there's that. And who doesn't want a little cheese? A little cheese makes everybody happy. And like I said, I'm not sure if we're going to need to add some half and half to this or if there will be enough moisture from the vegetables, from the sauteed vegetables. And I did saute those vegetables probably for a good almost 20 minutes because I did want them very soft. As we make this dish, soft vegetables will be a help. And you know, I'm thinking now that it's got the veg in there and the melty cheese. That it's pretty good. It's pretty, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I can live like that. I don't think it needs any more half and half. Let's go ahead and take a taste of it though and see how it is. Needs pepper. And I'm careful with the amount of salt that I'm going to put in here because my corned beef is pretty salty. So just like maybe a tablespoon or a teaspoon. Maybe a teaspoon. I think that'll do it. And just give that a little stir. go get the corned beef and I'm gonna get a baking dish we're all we're almost believe it or not we're almost done yay hooray okay so I've got my coal cannon the potatoes spinach cabbage onion garlic Swiss cheese all the good things here I have my corned beef and I have a baking dish I'm gonna do this in an eight by eight because it's just the two of us and I'm also going to cook it in my easy bake oven and this one fits really nicely in there so we've got this all mixed up it's just about room temperature maybe just a little bit more and then we're going to go ahead and place on a good sized dollop of our cold cannon mixture 
and then we are just going to roll that up like a little like a, like, like a little cannoli like like a little cannoli almost um, you could get fancy you could get the piping back out I don't see the need that's one more thing to wash and this is a quick and easy St. Patrick's Day so get, do another one And if you were the only person in your household that liked um, corned beef and this would work for you, you could even go to the deli and just ask for a couple of slices of corned beef, sliced thick. They don't really care if you order a little or a lot. So yeah, if you were just one or two people, you could just get this a couple of slices and that would be fine. Let me give it a little roll up. And I do think it's easier to roll it from the fat side to the thin side. Kind of like when I put on my pants in the morning. <laughs> thought about it I would have asked for eight slices and been less specific on the weight and more specific on the number of slices because um, I think two is a serving size personally and that way you could easily feed four people so there's that And if it squishes out the sides, just pat it back in. That's fine. Or leave it. It's, it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. And here we go with our last one. So I made seven. Like I said, I probably should have asked for eight slices. I just said, get me close to a pound. And we will have this for dinner tonight. We will probably also have this for lunch tomorrow. And then we'll fight over the last one with my guess, something like that. You're like, Shorty Vaughn, but you have so much left over. Yep, not to worry. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the bottom of this baking dish. And this is not going to cook in the oven long at all because pretty much you're just going to be heating it through we have no potentially hazardous foods here um, pretty much everything is good to go got mashed potato on my hand okay and I am just going to spread that my coal cannon ish delight into the bottom of this baking dish and you don't have to be super fussy about it it'll be fine there we go and now I'm just going to lay my little corned beef I think they're super cute I think they really do kind of look like cannolis. I'm just going to go ahead and layer these in here. And then I am going to cook mine at 350 degrees in the Easy Bake Oven for probably 20 to 25 minutes. And... So that they heat through honestly you could make them in the microwave you could put the whole thing in the microwave 
and you could just nuke this up for like, I'd say seven minutes, six or seven minutes. Put a little, 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 little plastic wrap on top so it doesn't make a huge mess in your microwave. You could microwave, you could microwave your St. Patrick's Day dinner if you were so inclined. I'm going to go ahead and throw mine in the Easy Bake Oven because I've got some other things that I have to do and then it's set it and forget it in there and what have you. Like I said, about 20, 25 minutes just so it's all heated through. It's going to be super yummy and delicious for this meal. Like I said, I think that this would feed for, especially with the extra potatoes and yum yums on the bottom. You could take two slices of Swiss cheese and put them on the top for that extra little bit of deliciousness. You could also take a gravy packet, one of those dollar McCormick packets of brown gravy and make that, those are about a dollar when they're on sale. You could make that, pour that all on top of here and then you would have a delicious gravy. If you had any kind of drippings or what have you, you could use those, you could use the bacon fat and make some gravy. I don't think it's gonna need it. Um, and I think that is honestly has plenty of cheese on the inside. So I'll show you the photo when it's all set and done. But this is my quick, easy, less than 20 minute St. Patrick's Day feast. Yay, hooray, happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Be good, be careful and look both ways. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous.